This is part five of Mastering Doctrine Relationships and I'm going to be looking at the many-to-many. -many. The example I'll use will be that of users and interest groups. So by the end of this we will have created three tables in total, one for users, one for interest groups and an intermediary table which sits between the two. I record in high res so to make sure you have the best viewing experience go ahead and select high def if it hasn't automatically been selected and if it's your first time on my channel, you can opt to be shown more of my content by clicking subscribe. I'll start things off by creating a group. Now the word group is a reserved word in SQL, so let's keep life simple. I'll call it interest group. And I'm just gonna have three properties, an ID, which will be the primary key. I'll give the group a name. And then I also need to create the reference to users. So instead of actually calling it users, I'm going to call it members because a group has members. There is no right way, there is no wrong way. It's just how I prefer to do this. On the user entity, which already exists from a previous recording, I'll now add the interest groups property. And then in the constructor, I will set that to an array collection. And by doing that, it just gives us a bit of extra power when it comes to uh, querying and filtering than if we had just a normal array. And so before I start adding annotations and all that doctrine stuff, I just want to make sure that my API is good and that it reads well. So I've generated my getters and setters and I'll check those out. So instead of saying set interest groups, which you'd never do, a user would join an interest group. And so as a parameter, it'll take an interest group and I'll not fill it in just yet. I'll come back to that shortly. Just like I did with the user entity, I'll fill out my constructor and I will set the members on the interest group entity to a array collection. Generate my getters and setters. And I'll do it for all three and just delete change what I don't need. So set members, that doesn't sound right. What you would do is add a member to the group. And so that will be a user and I just need to make members singular. And again, I'm not going to fill this one out just yet. I'm going to give it a bit of thought and just take care of a couple of other things. So I need to remove this set ID because that will be done automatically when it gets added to the database. Okay, so how do we define the owning side of a many to many relationship? The way I think about it is this what needs to exist first. So in order for a user to join a group, the group needs to exist first. So in that scenario, then the owning side will be the user. We read the relationship from left to right, many users to many interest groups, and that is inversed by members on the interest group entity. And so, Previously, where we created a join column because there was just two tables. In this instance, we need to create a join table. So I'm going to call that users underscore interest underscore groups. And at the end of this, we'll have three tables instead of two. I only want to have one way of creating this association. And so I'm going to do that using this join interest group method on the user entity. What this will do is add the user to the group and then it will add the group to the user's list of interest groups. So we're killing two birds with one stone and that's just as simple as doing this. Interest group, if you remember, we created this add a member method. And then as far as adding the interest group to the user's list of groups, it's just a case of adding it to the array. So I'll give this a bit of a tidy up. My one and only parameter is no longer an array collection, it's an interest group. And then I'm going to go over to the interest group itself and just start adding my annotations. I'm letting Doctrine know to treat this as an entity. The table name is going to be interest group. Add my primary key. Name will be a string, which I do by creating a column annotation and giving it a type string. The members property is really straightforward. I just need to add it as a many to many. I don't need to do any other stuff regarding uh, join tables like I did with the user entity because that's already taken care of by that as that is the owning side. 
So it's just many interest groups to many users. And this will be mapped by interest groups on the user entity. And so then in order to add a member to the group, it's really as simple as this. This members brackets equals member. You're just adding it to the array. Again, I'll tidy this one up. We're no longer expecting an array collection. We're expecting a user. And that is that. What I will do now is create a migration file by running php bin console doctrine colon migrations diff. This looks at the entity files, looks at the database, sees what's different and creates SQL from that. So I've created two tables here, one for interest group, one for users interest groups, which if you recall was established in the user entity. The user entity already existed, so there's no new table for that. And this users interest groups, if you check out the primary key, it's a composite primary key made of the user ID and interest group. And there's just two foreign keys which reference the user and the interest group. So in order to add that permanently to the database, we run doctrine migrations migrate. Asks if you want to make permanent changes. The answer is yes. I'll go over to dbeaver and see what's happened. I'll check out the user table first. So still just the two fields. If I look at the foreign keys, no new foreign keys have been added. We've still just got one remaining, which referenced the address table from previous recording. I want to check out interest group. And so two fields created ID and name. If I look at the foreign keys, no foreign keys have been created on that table. So I'll check out users interest groups. And as we can see here, two foreign keys, one which references the interest group table and one which references user and also just two fields, user ID and interest group ID. And if you look at the key column, you'll see that both of these are primary keys. They're what we call a composite primary key. Let's take this for a test drive now. So I'll just create a method in the controller, many to many, and I need to first create a group. So let's have a Kung Fu group. So Kung Fu group equals new interest group. Need to give it a name. Then I just use the entity manager, which is now a class property to persist that. Now I'm going to create a user to join the group. So user equals new user. In fact, I'll call it member, a member of a group. Member equals new user. And then I'm just going to say member join interest group. I pass in the name of the group, persist that with the entity manager. And then in order to make those changes, permanent you just need to call entity manager flush because remember by calling entity manager persists you're not actually making permanent changes to the database you're just bringing your entities under the management of the entity manager i'll give this a root name many to many over to the browser many to many Okay, user six has joined group one because I already had some users in the database. Let's go to dbeaver and check that out. So I'm just going to do a couple of queries to see what's been created. Check out the interest group first. So there you go. One interest group with the name NYC Kung Fu group. Let's check out users, uh, users interest groups rather. So there we go. Now we have a user ID and we have an interest group ID. But here's a question I'm often asked. What if we want extra fields? For example, what if we want to keep a record of when the user joined the group? How do we handle that? Because if you recall, the table was just created by adding this annotation to the user entity. So we seem quite limited. I'll show you how to take care of that in the next installment. Hopefully you found this recording useful. If you would like to be notified when I release more content like this, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. 
I release new content at least every 10 days and details of my upcoming schedule can be found in the comments on my homepage.